Hey, what's going on? So I want to do a video talking about sleep earbuds. I've done a bunch of videos in the past about these and basically now that I've owned them, I want to talk about three of the different brands. I'm going to talk about the Quiet On 3 sleep earbuds, the Bose Sleep Buds 2, and the Amazfit Zen Buds. I also have a pair of foam earplugs, just like regular these things. So we're going to talk about those as well. So I'm going to go over a whole bunch of stuff in this video. I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. I'm going to go over the price, the comfort, the features, how much sound they actually block, the ease of use, the case, the battery, the phone app, and talk a little bit about customer service. And I'm going to give you my favorites in order at the very end. Uh, I'll probably You'll probably get the gist of it as I'm talking about it, which one I like the best and the least. But... Um, I'm going to try to give you that information all in some sort of way that makes sense. This is going to be kind of hard. There's a lot of information to get through, but I'm not going to talk about specifics of any of them. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. Now, if you're interested in any of these, I'll have links for all of them down in the video description, as well as links to all of the previous videos I've done, reviews on all of these, as well as some side-by-side -side comparisons. So this is like, uh, I've owned them all now and I've used them. And now that I've owned them and used them, my actual like opinion on all of this based on this stuff. All right, first things first is price. There is a huge difference between all of them. Foam ear tips, you can get a case of 50 ear tips, which is basically 25 pairs <laughs> for $12.99. The Amazfit Zen Buds you can get on Amazon for $149.99. The bows are normally $249, but on Amazon I saw them today for $199. And the Quietons are the most expensive, $269. Now we'll talk about comfort. So the Amazfit Zen Buds, to me, are the most comfortable. Now everybody's ears are different, so everybody's going to have a different preference for comfort level, but the Amazfit Zen Buds were the most comfortable for me. Second most comfortable was the Bose Sleep Buds. Um, I just found them a little bit less comfortable than the Amazfit. Now looking at them side by side, these are the Amazfits and these are the Bose. Um, they obviously have a slight difference in their shape, but I just found the Amazfits a little bit more comfortable than the Bose. But they're both comfortable. Neither one of them are really uncomfortable. Um, I just found that the Amazfits seem to be a little more comfortable for me. Following that, I would say the foam ear tips are more comfortable than the Quietons, uh, even though these are not terribly comfortable. I don't find the Quietons particularly comfortable, um, and I'll explain why. So they have different size foam ear tips, and you have to squish that thing down, and then jam that into your ear, and then the foam expands. Just like these things, you, you squish them down, and then they expand. Now the difference between them is there's a hard piece inside of that foam ear tip. So when you squish it down, it only goes so small, and I had the smallest ear tip on and there's barely any foam around this thing and when you squish it down and jam it in your ear, to me it was too small in my ear. Actually my left side was fine, my right side was too small and the right one would fall out while I was sleeping. So I switched to the next size up and now they're both like a little too tight um, and because it's foam and it's pressurized, it's pushing out against my ear all night. So I find them a little bit uncomfortable just for that reason. Now the main unit itself that sits inside this negative space in your ear doesn't seem to bother me at all. So as far as that's concerned, it's no big deal. Features, okay. So the foam ear tips have no features. You put them in, they block some sound, that is it. The Quietons are active noise canceling. So they take sounds somehow with a microphone and they negate it and put a negative sound into your head. So they are super quiet. So the Bose Sleep Buds and the Amazfit Zen Buds both use noise masking. So they are earplugs basically, but they have a sound that plays in your ear to kind of drown out any outside noises. Whereas the Quietons don't, they're just active noise canceling earbuds. And because these have noises, these both have their own apps that you have that come with them and you get to choose what kind of noise you want to listen to throughout the night and there's all sorts of features and options and everything like that. Now speaking of the app, I'll just dive right into that. The Bose app is super easy to use. Uh, 
it is specifically designed for the sleep buds. That's it. So it was really easy to use. Now the Amazfit Zen Buds is just a app. It's actually called Zepp, Z-E-P-P. -P, and the app is very difficult to navigate. Uh, Amazfit makes other products more than just Zen Buds, and they all connect with this one app. I just found the app difficult to use. Uh, I don't really know what else to say other than that. Now, speaking of that, I'm gonna jump to customer service. The Amazfit Zen Buds were my absolute favorite up until recently. I upgraded my phone from a Samsung Galaxy S9 to a Samsung Galaxy S21, and when I did that, the Zen Buds stopped working. I downloaded the app, I tried to sync them and everything, and it just gives you an error message, tells you to contact customer support. So I go through the prompt, uh, enter my email address. It sent me an email with a link to a website to fill out a form. And in that form, you have to give the information of the Zen Buds, like their serial number or whatever, which you can only get. It wasn't the serial number. It was a different number that you had to get off of the Zen Buds. But the only way to get the number was by connecting them to the app. Now, here's the problem. I couldn't connect the app to the Zen Buds Therefore, I can't get the number off of the Zen Buds through the app. And you need that number to fill out the form. You can't leave that blank and you can't just put in, I tried to put in nothing and zero and I tried a bunch of stuff. So I have no way to contact Amazfit to get this situation fixed. So these have actually become a paperweight, which sucks because these were my favorites out of all of them, um, but now they're not. <laughs> And if you're getting anything of value out of this so far, make sure you give the video a thumbs up down below. And if this stuff interests you at all, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell next to the subscribe button and switch that to all. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos. Now let's say that these still worked and I could use them just fine uh, because they were so comfortable and I actually liked the noises that were on them a lot. That's why these were my favorite. Uh, I found something out recently about the case that drives me a little crazy. And so let's jump into the cases real quick. So the Amazfit Zen Buds case is a little weird to use. You have to spin it like that. And when you're like laying in bed and trying to sleep, I had multiple nights where I was just really struggling to get the case to open, which it's not really that hard to open. It's just, it's just a weird, it's weird that it opens like that. All right. Uh, something that I noticed is that these three dots on the front, these three lights, when the case is fully charged, the lights stay on. And they're pretty bright when your room is all dark and you're trying to sleep. So I found that kind of annoying. Um, I would have them sitting on my nightstand and they're just shining right into my face. So I would have to turn the case around and shine it against the wall or just unplug them and then the lights would go off. Now the Quiet-On's case I find extremely annoying and hard to use. Uh, it has a very small like little indent here to get your finger in. I don't have fingernails. I chew my nails. It's terrible. I know so I have a tough time grabbing that and what happens a lot is my finger slides off it and it just closes because to hold them your hand naturally ends up resting on See how they like go backwards right here. So like if you touch that the case lid just falls forwards um, so you have to like hold the case weird. I don't really know how to explain it. And if you hold it, the magnet is really strong. So it wants to like spin in your hand rather than open. And then I have this problem where the case just closes all the time. So it's really difficult to use. And then when you actually pull the earbuds out, they look almost identical. You can't tell just looking at them which one is which. So you have to look on the bottom and there's an R and an L, but it's really small and you have to get it in just the right light. So if you put them in your hand together, you get them mixed up and you don't know which is which. So that's just, I don't know, it's just kind of like an annoyance, but um, it's something that I think could be improved on the Quiet On 4s when they get around to that. Now the Bose case is great. It's just, you slide it. It's really cool how it works. Ever since I first opened it and tried it for the first time, I was really impressed. It just feels like a really nice piece of, I guess it's a piece of equipment. Uh, works really well. The downside to the Bose case is the battery life. Now I've charged this thing up and let it sit on my nightstand for like a week or two and not used them and then gone to use them and the case is dead and they're dead and you can't use them at all. 
So these kind of have to stay plugged in all the time. Like if you were going on a week long trip, it would maybe hold the charge for that long, but you definitely want to bring a backup charger for them because the case does not hold the battery very well. And I'm not sure why that is. As far as the battery life for all of them, I honestly never made it through the night with them. I would usually wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, I gotta get this thing out of my ear and pull them out. <laughs> I very rarely make it through the entire night with them still in my head. So I don't know if they even last that long. All right, now I'm gonna talk about the sound blockage. I'm sure everybody's waiting to hear what, which ones actually are the best at that. So I did a couple tests. I had Trisha lay next to me in bed and I had her do some fake snoring and then I had her walk up and open the bedroom door and close it a few times. And not like loud or anything, just like she would normally do in the middle of the night if she was trying not to wake me up. And our bedroom door is really squeaky, so there's no like sneaking around, like it just squeaks, it's loud. <laughs> so based on that, the foam ear tips were almost useless. Like I could hear everything, they barely did anything. I was kind of shocked at how bad they actually were. Not much better than them was the Amazfit Zen Buds, which is also shocking to me because I thought these were great and I've recommended them as the best for a while. And when I actually put them to the test, I was surprised at how much noise I could still hear with them in. Uh, I think why I liked them so much was that they were comfortable and they put a noise masking right into my head and it was enough that it would help me get to sleep and it was just enough to make it so that when she came in and out of the room and got in bed, the noise didn't wake me up. But they didn't do a great job at blocking out the noise. Next up from that was the Bose with the sounds turned off. So with the sounds turned off on the Bose, it still blocked more noise than with the Zen Buds turned on. <laughs> so just these in my ears with no noise coming out of them, they did a pretty good job. Uh, and then when you turn the noise on, they were like neck and neck with the quiet ons. Uh, there's something about it with the noise masking that makes it, it like makes your brain, I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. It tricks your brain to like focus more on the noises that are coming out of the buds than the other noises. Now the quiet ons for me are just too quiet. Uh, they block out the noise the best. They're a little bit better than the bows, but the problem is it's too quiet. So then I can hear my breathing, I can hear my heartbeat, I can hear when I swallow, like all these noises within my own body become that much more apparent to me, as well as like moving my head on the pillow, stuff like that. So uh, for me, absolute quiet is very difficult to sleep and having some sort of white noise or there's, I mean, there's tons of sounds, there's rain noises and all sorts of stuff on the bows uh, that make them for me, better than the quiet ons. Now, I know a lot of people want that dead silence and they don't want that. So in that case, the quiet ons would be the best for them. Okay, so now my favorites in order. The bows came in number one. I think they're the most versatile. And for me, they're the best. It used to be the Amaz Fits, but ever since the customer service dropped off, and now that I've done the sound comparisons, the little bit more discomfort that these cause, I think makes up for the fact that these have issues and they don't block as much sound. So the, the Amazfits got knocked from the number one position. Now the quiet ons I'm putting in second place because they're just too quiet for me. Again, if you don't want the noise and you want quiet, these are really good at blocking out the noise. Um, I'm sure that they won't block out all noise. They're not gonna block out if your neighbor's car alarm goes off. None of these are. They're not designed to block out 100% of noise. And then I guess because I can't connect the Amazfits to my phone anymore, the foam ear tips came in third, which really is terrible because these were great, but they're literally a paperweight now. They don't work anymore because I can't connect them to my phone. So these are out completely. I think the foam ear tips are just a waste of time, but if you can't afford $200 for these, obviously these are like pennies. So. That's it. All right, so let me know in the comments what you think about all these things. I've had a lot of people reach out and ask about other products as well. And unfortunately, I buy all this stuff with my own money and I don't really need to own more than what I already have. So um, I appreciate you asking me to re review more. If this channel gets monetized or 
uh, if I find a way to pay for these things, then maybe I would do more, but um, I just don't want to dump a whole bunch of money into buying a whole bunch of products that I don't need. <laughs> That's just the truth. <laughs> But if you are interested in helping support this channel, you could join my Patreon. I'll put a link for that down in the description. It's just patreon.com slash Nick Borsellino. And it's like a fan club. You get like basically early access to videos and behind the scenes and a bunch of stuff over there. The more patrons I get on Patreon, I will be doing more stuff in the future. So a big shout out to my top patrons on Patreon. Right now it's Kate Romani, Diana Markowitz, and Trisha Wagner. Thank you very much for your continued support. I really appreciate you. And again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.